you want to do any opening statement? Or you just want to no, let's just see how long it is a point camera's heavy. <laughs> Can you reflect it all two years ago to today? I mean, I think if you look two years ago today, I mean, kind of what you what you see, if you want to just sum it up, you see you see the growth, you see the progress, you see the stories of success of guys who've grown up, matured, guys who have, have seen it through, guys who have chosen to come back and, and finish, their, finish their careers here when they had other options on the table. Speaks a lot about the makeup of those kids, what they see in the potential of this team, what they see in the potential of the program, and how important, like, you know, this logo is to them to put their stamp on here. You know, you got guys that chose to come back who chose to come back for the reason of, I want a brick with my name on it out front. And that says a lot about where those guys are at and what their motivations are day to day when they come to work. What's it like seeing a guy make progress from day one of this to the end of this? I mean, honestly, that, that, that's the part that gets me most fired about my job is, is seeing that, is seeing that progress. Seeing guys come in, whether it's growing up physically, growing up from a maturity standpoint, and just seeing that incremental pro progress along the way, like that part's huge. Like that's, that's the motivation. And then when those guys start to see that, their motivation builds. Or they see that in their teammate, their roommate, their best friend on the team, whoever that may be. They see their growth, and like that drives and pushes them along too. Any particular returning players stand out to you with how they've done? Through Man, the like it, I, we've talked before, like it, it's hard for me to point out individuals because there's so many stories of success and so many stories of great progress. It's really hard for me to single out one guy because you can kind of go position group by position group, and those stories run deep into into each one of those rooms. So I, mean, I hate to I hate to leave a guy out because there's so much to be said about each one of those guys. Casey Roddick, Jeremiah Byers, just their build and, and what you. What, I mean, are they close to their maximum potential? I mean, how much more can you unlock from them and what do you think about this? Yeah, I mean, you know, like, you know, some some testing in the weight room this week, you know, Casey Roddick was able to hit the biggest bench he's ever hit in his life. You know, we'll finish up a squad on Friday. I I've, I've assume there's something pretty big on tap for him there too. So just, you know, those guys come in, you know, you know, it's not different, worse, better, or anything else, but like when you come into a new program, it's it's just that, it's new. And so those guys, some of those guys, they got to adapt to a different style of training, a different style of coaching, whether it be in the tempo of it or the overall workload or the movements they're asked to do or whatnot. But you've seen that group that's come in this year, even all the way down to the freshmen who've come in and jumped on board, adapted really well. And that speaks a lot to the veteran leadership on this team of showing those guys the way, not leaving them to figure it out on their own. But they got great examples in front of them every day of not just vocal leaders, but guys that come out and live it every day, spill it out physically. And they see that and like, okay, that's what we do at Florida State. That's what we'll be about. With the competition that's expected this spring with so many newcomers, mm -hmm. do you already see signs of that competition in your area? Oh, 100 percent. 100%. You see guys at their rack that have an eye over their shoulder seeing what that guy that plays their spot is doing, seeing what his last set is, maybe slow playing the rest a little bit so they can go last, like, hey, throw another 10 on there, whatever it may be. And you see, you see that competition there. And then you know, as those weeks build, obviously you get you know, usually you know, week four, week five into, into the eight-week winter program, you start hearing a lot of talk about football, right? A lot of, a lot of banner going back and forth. The guy's like, oh, I can't wait till spring. Right? And that's what you want to see. I want to, I want to hear that out of those guys. As important as training is, what a foundational thing that is, the main thing is keeping in mind that the whole time, what's it all about? It's about being able to, when you cross that white line, to go out and play ball, making all that training pull into action. The, the defensive guys cheering for offensive guys and offensive guys cheering for defensive guys, is that something you guys still have to encourage, or is that happening? No, it's be, that's become a pretty a pretty organic thing. you know. And it's, it's not natural for kids. Like a lot of guys, especially in a hard situation like tour of duty, it's very, your, your instinct says go inside yourself, get yourself through. Right, but when those guys start to find, we start pouring into others. All of a sudden, it's not so hard for you anymore. And as those guys see that and feel that, and they know how that affects them when they're on the receiving end of it, that just grows. How good of a job does the staff do in finding transfers that are willing to come in, put in the work, and kind of fit what this culture is about? I mean, elite. You know, I mean, you see the guys that have come in here, not just what the production has been on the field, but their production in the community, what those guys have done in the classroom of getting degrees, being Seminole scholars, the leadership those guys have shown coming out to workouts and whatnot. And once again, that says a lot about the existing locker room of bringing those guys in, teaching them our way of doing things and putting those guys in a situation to flourish and show why we brought them to Florida State. Watching Winston Wright be able to, you know, you saw where he came from a year ago mm -hmm. uh, to where he is now. Yeah. Just how, what's that been like? I mean, that's, that's been, a, it's been a, a, a long, hard path for him. And But if, there, if there's any kid who has ever cut out to face that adversity and come on top of it, it's Winston Wright. That kid's, that kid's mindset is a different mindset than most young men his age. And that's a guy who came in every day, nose to the grindstone, pouring into that rehab process, trying to maximize everything he was full go to do in the weight room to the point now where he's kind of back full go across the board you know and there's there's still there's still some steps in front of him of man of, of you know managing the workload us keeping an eye on the data and things like that but like where he from from what he went through you know basically just shy of a year ago to where he's at now has been nothing short of remarkable what kind of 
canvas, I guess, you have with guys like Hakeem Williams, particularly in Lucas Simmons? Yeah, I mean, you get those guys, they come in, they're, they're obviously very, very talented, right? I mean, everybody knows the, the high school accolades and all that. But when they come in, you realize oh, they're still, they're babies still. They're still relatively untrained, which is exciting because that's not a ready-made product. Those guys are super moldable. And especially in regards to those two guys, those guys want, they want it all. Right? They want it to be hard. They want to go through it. They want to see the development and stuff. You know, for being guys who are, you know, five-star guys, it's anything but a five-star mentality. Those guys are as, as humble and hungry as any walk-on I've ever had. And so that just that paints a pretty good picture for what the future can hold for those guys as they see that path through. Travis J, one of those guys that, that stuck around here. Mm -hmm. I mean, what have you seen from him? Any, anything particularly different or special out of him? I mean, with him this last year, the biggest thing you see what he's done in the classroom. You see what that we see what his what his grades look like and the, and the progression there what he's poured into the academics physically has been no different you see what he looks like on the hoof right now physically what he's built there and with a ton of motivation to come back this year and try to try to fulfill all that potential that everybody always knows that he's had and in my opinion he's poured out the kind of work it takes to be able to go do that yeah. really really I'm excited for what he has to show throughout the summer and into camp so you have guys come back late in their careers for mm -hmm. another year Keep an eye on them, like make sure they're not getting complacent. And, and how do you, like, how excited have you been by the way? Yeah, you know, when, when those guys make the decision to come back, obviously, you know, they're, they're making a decision to come back, not just for their team, but there's some there's some self-serving in that decision, too, wanting to be able to better their spot for the following year and whatnot. And so with those guys, a lot of times by the time you've been, you know, you've played four or five years of college football, you got to keep a little different eye on those guys. You're a little closer to your genetic potential. got to do a few different things with those guys to keep them progressing, keep them motivated. And then the biggest challenge with those guys is challenge them to pour into more than just themselves. Like, everybody knows you can play. Who are you going to make better? Who are you going to bring along? Are you showing those young guys the right things that they need to do so they can become you someday? And so it, their challenges kind of come in different ways. It's not just the physical challenge. It, a lot of those guys, it's the, it's the challenge of leadership, the challenge of the daily standard. You know, being in the role of a leader, of understanding, like, if I'm a leader and I call myself a leader, I can't come in and have a bad day. Because by calling myself a leader, that means I want all eyes on me. Well, I can't let an outside circumstance come in and change who I am when I come to work that day because I got a bigger responsibility to those guys who view me as a leader. And that's where the pressure and challenge comes for those guys. And those guys have handled that really well so far. Coach Thompson, probably one of the more happier guys in this uh, facility right now with, with Jaheim and Kyle. What, what kind of players do you think they're going to turn? Yeah, I, mean, I think I think both those guys have a lot to offer this team. And, you know, that, that's, a, that's a deep room. You know, you guys saw the progression of Marquise and Douglas over the course of last year. You've seen Jarrell Powers getting better and better. You know, you've seen Jackson West pour a ton in this offseason through a rehab process. So that room is starting to get real, real deep, which gives him a lot of options. you got a lot of guys with real varied skill set in that room. So that, that room, is, I think, is going to be able to have a, have a – should be really excited of the impact they'll be able to have on this offense and this team this coming year. Coach, have you seen Greedy Vance step up as a leader during the tour duty scene? Yeah, I mean, like that, that's a kid. Like his 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 positive attitude like pours out of the kid at all times. I don't care if it's 5:30 in the morning in the building or 5:30 at the end of the day when he leaves the building. Like he's the same kid all the time, right? Loves his teammates, pours in his teammates. You've seen him gain, you know, whatever it's been, 12, 13 pounds, changing his body, developing. But like that's that guy all the time, and it does not matter the situation. He's one of those kids that could have the worst day of his life outside the building. When he walks in, you would never be able to tell that in a million years. And you guys kind of see a glimpse of that today, just kind of like you've seen the practice and stuff before as well. All right. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Josh.